Okay. I'm Dan Rundy. I hold the Schreier Chair here at CSIS. It is a real personal pleasure to host uh, this event, a presentation of the World Bank Group's newly released Doing Business 2014 report. Um, I think uh, most of you know this, but if you don't, I believe that the World Bank Group's most important intellectual contribution it makes to development is the doing business indicators and the investment climate work that's related to the doing business indicators. Uh, I think we're coming at a particularly important moment, and I know um, friends are going to speak to uh, speak to this in more detail. But I think there's been a significant review in the last year or so of the doing business indicators. I'm, President Kim has came out very strongly in support of the doing business indicators, and I think we're going to learn more about what, a the results this year, but also sort of we're going to have a chance to have a conversation about the future of the doing business indicators. They have been responsible for thousands of reforms all over the world in at least 100 countries. They're not perfect by any measure, uh, but they certainly are um, something that's been a powerful tool for change. And sometimes it's not about having uh, policy dialogue that's going to cause change. It's oftentimes about country rivalries. And if you have a blood feud with your neighbor and, you're, and you've told your populace for 100 years or 1,000 years that the neighbors across the river are terrible people or, or play into some terrible mythology of some national mythology and they're 100 points higher on the doing business indicators, this is very embarrassing and creates cognitive dissonance. So sometimes it's not about the best study and sometimes it's not about the most persuasive academic. Sometimes it's about embarrassing political leaders to make change and I think sometimes that's one of the important reasons we have the doing business indicators and the rankings that are associated with it. Um, it's really wonderful to have my very good friend Anna Palacio here who's going to make some opening remarks. Anna Palacio is the former foreign minister of Spain. She's also the former general counsel at the World Bank Group. She was a member of the European Parliament. She was a member of the Parliament of Spain and I think and is a very accomplished lawyer uh, and is friend to many of us here in Washington. Uh, I think when Anna was general counsel at the, uh, at the World Bank she brought both a lawyer's perspective and a former foreign minister's perspective and a former politician's perspective to the indicators. And I think that's why it, she made, it made her such a gifted interlocutor with the doing business team. And she it made, her, it made it easy for her to understand the value of it as well as some of the weaknesses of it. So Anna, without further ado, I'm going to have you come up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please welcome Anna Palacio. <laughs> we have to hold the mic because we... Well then, thank you, thank you. And honestly, it's not rhetoric, rhetoric. If I just highlight the, I mean, how timely and how interesting this getting together is. Why? I mean, first, this is the eleventh uh, doing business report, but it's not. It's just much more than the eleventh doing business report. It's the sur the confirmation of the survival of the doing business report because I, this is the first thing that we have to address that the doing business report uh, mean I myself I when I mean I uh, just took a stand uh, backing the doing business report w w after the uh, I mean the high level panel or just uh, concluded that the doing business report had to to mean to delete the ranking and had to decaffeinate in the end what the doing business is uh, I mean I'm a lawyer of continental law background and Michael Klein who is the father of the doing business report and I must say that the father and the originator of a way of of ad addressing certain uh, s certain parameters that are subjective and the way to synthesize to synthesize uh, this subjective subjective and quantitative data and I think that doing business was a pioneer in this area and, and this has created a, a real school. Um, is doing business a perfect instrument? No, precisely because of, of this, because there is a component of subjectivity. And I remember, uh, Michael probably remembers too, my discussions with him and my discussions and many times concentrated on a paragraph, uh, in a paragraph that uh, just uh, address the um, cumbersome uh, 
I mean, the, the, the cumbersome step of the notaries of, uh, l of uh, uh, Latin approach. So the notaries in France, in Spain, and in many other countries in Europe. This was a, the paragraph that every politician from Spain, <coughs> France, and would call me and say, but Anna, you are a lawyer. I mean, come on, this paragraph, this is unacceptable. This, is, this report is absolutely biased in favor of, the, of common law approaches. And we have a very bad ranking, and we don't deserve this very ba bad ranking. And I remember discussing with, uh, with Michael the opportunity of deleting this paragraph that in the end got deleted. But at the same time, I, I mean, I stood by, by the, I mean, the principles of doing business. Doing business has been, I mean, has been improving, improving, uh, just trying to address these different bias. And, and frankly, I, I think that what we have today is, is, as I say, not a perfect, but a very interesting instrument. And the, I mean, the, the evidence of how interesting this instrument is, is that not, I mean, as recently as last week, in the European Council, the European Council is the meeting of the heads of state and government, so the highest level, the uh, Cameron, so the British Prime Minister, presented a study on how in Europe we had to uh, address red tape with exactly the same approach than doing business and, in my understanding, really inspired by, by doing business because it, it addresses it address the uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. Of course, in the world there are very different measures of what is a small and medium-sized si enterprise, but uh, the European tissue, uh, industrial and entre entrepreneurial tissue is of small and medium-sized enterprises. And of course, the voice, I mean, it's not surprising, the voice of France just said, not at all, we don't accept that this, this project goes forward, this project promoted by Great Britain, because it will affect the uh, health uh, security and job security which is the demagogic approach to, to try to uh, counter any, any project. The day before yesterday, I was in Brussels. And I was in Brussels participating in a reflection on how we could just make a, a more agile administration in the European Union. And of course, the doing business report is important for Europe. And I, as I said, many of its uh, uh, I mean, enemies are, are big uh, countries in Europe, but it's also extremely important for, for the, the de developing world. Uh, the example of Georgia has been mentioned, and Georgia really, there was a willingness to address and to, to address the, the parameters that were uh, just the, the, the guiding parameters of the doing business. And the result, and I, I, I say this because I had the opportunity to discuss, is that the foreign direct investment increased exponentially after these, these measures were taken. So, I, I mean, I, th I conclude by saying that this is a very timely, a very interesting, that uh, what, how could we, I mean, how could we summarize what doing business uh, is, 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 I think it's an excellent, uh, an excellent catalog of, of, uh, of imperfect, imperfect indicators, but it's an excellent catalog. And we, I commend President Kim that just stood by doing business report as it is and not by a decaffeinated uh, version of it that would have been absolutely useless. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, very, very much. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Augusto Lopez Claros to come up from the IFC as part of the doing business team. I just want to make sure that the, the computer is working and we're not going to have a technology. The good news is we've moved into a new building. The bad news is 
uh, it's sort of karaoke night here at CSIS, and you have to hold the, the microphone. And we're still working out the kinks of the technology and the AV stuff, and it'll be probably about another month. At least we have AV. I've had several events where we haven't used any AV or microphones, and we've had to shout. So um, this is a, an improvement, and a month from now we'll have be even better. But Augusto, please come on up and, and share the, the findings of the Doing Business 2014 rankings. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Daniel, and uh, Ms. Palacio, thank you for your introductory remarks. It's really a pleasure to be with you today. Um, I'd like to spend two or three minutes uh, before <coughs> giving you an overview of the main insights that come from this year's report, just telling you a little bit about what it is exactly that doing business does. Uh, for those of you who perhaps uh, don't have some you know, familiarity with some of the, with some of the um, methodologies. Um, basically, we cover by now 11 indicators in 189 countries. Um, there is no claim made in the Doing Business report that um, this is everything that matters for creating a good business environment. Um, this is essentially a narrow look at what matters for the business community and for the private sector. There are many other things which we don't capture in the Doing Business report, and we're really quite open and clear about the limitations. Uh, we have nothing to say on education and training. We don't really cover aspects of macroeconomic stability. Um, we don't really look at issues of innovation and technology and so on. However, the indicators that we do cover do capture very important dimensions of the business environment. It does matter a great deal for the business community whether, for instance, you have a tax administration system that is very burdensome and very complicated or whether it is light and simple and transparent. Uh, in fact, <coughs> over the years, in designing the indicators, we have used two primary sources of insight for uh, essentially uh, capturing these dimensions of the business environment. One of them comes from the enterprise surveys that we do at the World Bank. By now, this is a very powerful machinery for, the co for, for collecting data in 125 countries, mainly in the developing world, that basically address the question of what are the bottlenecks for the business community? What are the main obstacles for the, to their economic activity? And from this, from this sort of ongoing research program, which is actually also in, in, in Global Indicators and Analysis, the department at the bank that houses the Doing Business Project, we know that, for instance, access to finance is very important for the business community. We know that infrastructure can be a very important bottleneck. We know that corruption is a, a, you know, a great concern of the business community. And so many of the indicators that we use in the Doing Business Project actually reflect the insights that come from the business community through the enterprise surveys that we, that we have done. And then the other aspect has to do essentially with work that has been done in the academic community. Um, over the last 10, 15 years, a number of papers have been written and you know, research projects have been underway that tell us you know, um, things like, for instance, that those countries that make it more difficult for, for entrepreneurs to enter the market, uh, that put more obstacles to the creation of new businesses, are also countries where you see uh, very large levels of informality, where you see you know, much higher levels of corruption. We have papers that have established quite clearly that delays to trade you know, through excessive, excessive bureaucracy and red tape actually have a negative impact on the volumes of, 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 uh, of trade and therefore ultimately have an impact on economic growth. Um, there is research that has shown that um, if you have excessi excessively burdensome regulation of the labor market, you know, this will tend to be associated with higher levels of unemployment lower levels of labor force participation, uh, higher, higher levels of unemployment, especially for the, for, for the young, and so on. So the, the choice of the doing business indicators is not, has not been made in a vacuum. You know, they reflect very important dimensions of what matters to the business community. The other um, comment I wanted to make very briefly is basically how do we go about collecting the data? This is very often a source of confusion. Uh, I have a number of my colleagues from the doing business team here in the audience and I, I think they will understand that this is perhaps one of the most complex things that the World Bank is doing at the moment. And I think this is useful to just make a couple of points about, about you know, how the, 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 do we go about collecting the data. 72% of the data actually comes from a reading of the law. 
um, that is one of the sort of innovations about this this project. You know, we look at the commercial at the commercial code or the company law to, for instance, find out what is the minimum capital requirement to get a business started. We look at the banking law to see, you know, do borrowers have the right to access their information from the main credit bureau. We look at the tax code to see what is the total, ta what, is, what is the corporate uh, profits tax rate, or what are the number of payments that, that companies have to do every year to fulfill their tax obligations. We look at fee schedules to get a sense of, you know, what are the costs associated with registering a property and so on and so forth. So that's like three quarters of the data. The rest of the data, we look at, <coughs> we, we have developed a large network of, of uh, experts on the ground, more than 10,000 by, by now, in 189 countries, and we have engagement with them, we have consultations with them to get a sense, especially of the time component associated with some of the indicators. How long does it take to ac actually get a business started on the ground, in reality? Uh, how long does it take to register property? How long does it take to enforce a contract when 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 to enforce a
Slander, 